Uh, this is a kind of different video, and it's up in my attic. I'm just showing uh, basically what's going on up here. Uh, long story, I've, I've been in this house for three years. Uh, I've known that there was rats up here for a while. Finally, I think I isolated the problem recently. Um, I think ever since this house was built, there were rats because of the way... I don't know if you can see over there. You probably can't, but there's where all the ele most of the electrical cables come to the house, almost all of them from the garage, and um, it, it there was t tons of space around it. Um, that's how they originally were getting in. Um, before this is all before I owned the house, and then some exterminators came. I can tell because there's like um, records in the garage that said the exterminators came in in 2003 and 2006 or something like that. And apparently, you know, got rid of the problem by sealing it with uh, steel wool and everything. But they were still getting in because I could hear them at night. And, you know, I'd set traps and boom, they would trigger occasionally. So they were definitely still up here. And you can see, you know, feces and um, all sorts of stuff. So I finally, I think, found the problem. I, I looked around. I found an area where there was uh, basically some flashing on the side of the house that didn't, um, seal all the way. And you could see some scratch marks where the wood was. So they kind of like made the hole bigger, sealed that up, um, and set traps everywhere and, uh, didn't catch anything since then, even though I usually, when I set traps, I'll catch something. But so I, I think I've isolated the problem at this point. They can't get in. I also chopped some of my tree on, on the side of my house that was hanging over the house, chopped the majority of the branches down. So they, they don't have an easy way to get onto my roof now anymore. I don't think they can climb up the horizontal. I think they possibly could climb the horizontal wall or like jump from a fence or something up part of the way the wall, but then they can't actually climb the part where you have like a gutter or the, um, or the eave, like, cause that's essentially like horizontal. I mean, um, yeah, they basically have to be able to hold their way. I, I doubt rats can climb completely upside down, um, for several feet on metal. I don't think that is possible. So as far as I know, they're not going to be able to get on my roof, which means they can't get any holes or create new holes. Um, so I think I'm safe for now. So basically what the problem was, they were up here and they had um, eaten through my old vents. So to t what I'm doing is I'm, I'm paying some people to, to, I paid some people to take the old insulation out, take the old vents out. They're replacing it with um, more high efficient vents and insulation, which I didn't really care about. My, my house is pretty small. Energy bill is always low regardless, but it's more like... Because of that, it made the price really cheap because there's a bunch of um, rebates in California to do this stuff. So I took advantage of the rebates, plus they have new funding where you fund it through your um, through your uh, property insurance. So it's all tax deductible. Um, kind of a new, very new program. So you, because, you know, depending on your tax rate, um, mine's like, what, 20, 20 to 25%. You're, you're getting a pretty good savings right there. So... Anyway, that's uh, what I'm doing there. Um, now let me show what I'm taking. You know, since the insulation's out, I, I can get a bunch of work done. So I've wanted to wire my house for a while. This is now I have no excuses, no insulation in the way. Rats are gone, so I don't have to be scared of anything. So I've been just going crazy up here. Um, these are, this is basically conduit. This is above my closet, which I'll, sh I'll go down and show. But uh, this is um, an electrical line I'm gonna run through from the garage. Um, to get power in this closet, I'm going to give it a dedicated circuit. So, like, you know, if someone f runs a blow dryer, they're not going to cut, cut, um, cut off all my servers. I'll have my servers in the closet below, which I've shown before, but I'll show kind of, like, the mess that's going on right now. Got this coax, which I need to terminate. The, f the freaking tools to terminate coax are expensive. They're, like, 20 bucks. Plus, you got to buy the pieces, which are, like, 10 bucks. So, um, I bought those, but they're coming. Uh... This one is going over to my home theater. This one's going over to my desktop. This is a USB which goes over to my printer. Um, this USB will be plugged into um, one of the DDWRT routers down there. So, you know, you can just print over Wi-Fi. Um, I've shown videos related to that, but just, you know, this way I can print basically in my office, but even though the uh, Wi-Fi thing is in there. So that'll be pretty cool. Um, all right, well, uh, I might show this one is done. I might not. I'm not sure, depending on how um, strapped for time I am. I basically have two weeks up here, but I'm also working, you know, full time. So I can only do this at night or on weekends. Um, so that's that's the above view. I'm still gonna add. I'm gonna add security cameras, which I'm gonna show as well. So that's that's basically what's up here. I'm gonna go down now and show you what's down there.
Here you can see uh, a place where I set a trap before. It is disgusting. Basically, the rat was dead under there, and I'm, it was there for months because I set the trap a couple months ago, and I hadn't checked it. And I pulled, you know, obviously pulled the trap and the dead rat out. Uh, a lot of its hair fell off, but I think those are like insects and insect crap. They essentially like ate it alive, or not alive, dead. But they ate it to the point where its body was really light, like essentially disintegrated because all that's left is the hair. Like any flesh had been eaten by insects. So that is this, I think that's what it is. I don't think it's the furnace heated it. I mean, that would be really bad because if the furnace is heating the dead rat, I have a, two wires right there which could potentially be heated. So I don't think that's a problem because you got this right here. So I have a feeling that this is somewhat insulated. I, mean, I think this is my furnace, so. I hope they didn't just essentially burn that rat. I think that's just insects, because it looks like insect poop to me. All right. Home theater over there. This wire will be gone. I actually just recently got a dog, which is an issue, because it started chewing my old wire. So I put this wire, which is already pretty, it's pretty crappy. I don't know why I got it. It's getting chewed. Here's my closet I showed before. Uh, a little mistake when drilling the hole there, but I'll patch that. This is where the USB and the coax, this is the coax, I still need to terminate. There'll basically be a panel right there so that you can just plug in, you know, female connections there. Well, the coax is always male, but whatever. Uh, actually, it'll be, yeah, it'll be a male coax, and then you just have your coax to go up to this, this guy. Uh, this is the modem. USB would go up to here. Over here, this is where all the um, Cat6 are gonna terminate. I got the two right now, and then the rest of them are gonna be power over ethernet. This is the power right there. Um, this is my current setup. Obviously gonna be upgraded. UPSs, I'm replacing with one big one that's normally like 300-ish dollars. It's the OR1500 PFC. RTTU, RT, RT uh, 2U, I think it's a 2U thing, so essentially like half the height of this. Um, shorter though, so, and it's about 55 pounds. It's it's probably gonna take a little bit less space on these three, and it has a longer run time than all three. Um, plus it's PFC, like it's good for PFC things. I don't know if any of these power supplies are, they probably are. So these actually aren't ideal, because they're not, these are making modified sine wave. That's gonna be pure sine wave, so. Um, that's the way to go. It's, a, it's an actually server UPS. These are just kind of like get them for you know, residential. So I'll, I'll probably be giving these away or selling them or doing something with them. Um, still a mess cable. This will be gone. These will all be, these will all basically go through a hole, which is then going to terminate all. You can pull this off and they'll all be terminated here. I have a power over Ethernet here, which is this guy. This basically is power over Ethernet injector. Only for 100 megabit but that's all these cameras are now these are the cameras I bought I'll definitely make a video showing my um, security setup using zone minder I've helped um, update the port for zone minder for FreeBSD. basically got that done uh, zone minder version 1 dot through 30 will support FreeBSD, you know and we'll get the port on there so you can even get the package for it so it's a pretty easy setup now I mean it all works essentially just like it would on Linux these are the cameras I got there's the Hikvision oh, I forgot the number uh, whatever 2032 I think these are three, three megapixel cameras so they're a little bit bigger than 1080p more square um, and also a little bit wider really really good quality for the price I paid about 75 for this then I got these each for like 60 I got another one for like 60, like a used one. So I got two of these, two bullets. And then I got a 20. Come on. I don't want to break this thing. Uh, this one has some issues, but there's supposed to be a 2332, which is kind of like a dome, but it's, it's, it's called a turret, I think. Um, the, re the reason you don't like domes aren't that great, even though they don't show where they're aiming, which is good. The bad thing is because of the curved glass, they usually have some glare issues. This doesn't have that issue, but it also isn't like a bullet where it could get easily adjusted. These you essentially place them in place and you tighten something down so they are aimed the direction you want them to be aimed. So 
basically these are easy to you know hit with a bat and they're not aimed down in or anymore these are less easy to break you know these ones you could hit this probably at the right spot and mess up the cable and turn it off and then this one is not but it also doesn't have a disadvantage of bullets so this is kind of the, the new way to go if you want something that's more in like a lower area this one's going to be right below my garage which will be easily hittable so uh, I'll show those um, once I get that set up going um, so that's basically it got a lot to work to do also another thing I'm gonna do is finally wired up these speakers this is going to be a difficult project because the way I have this cubby um, it is not simple to get a wire from that space that's a separate essentially a separate volume of space and then into here so I'm probably gonna have to cut a lot of drywall to and drill a lot of holes to get it working but eventually and I'll put a curtain make it all look clean so you won't even see anything but the TV and that one front, you know and the speakers but none of the wires um, those two wires I'll probably just um, pull back and then like paint uh, or just like tape to the wall and my wife wants to paint it she can these ones will have wires come from the ceiling so that's pretty much uh, my thing. I'm also gonna install a ceiling fan in my, my master bedroom. Um, that's one little thing I'm gonna do while the installation's out. So that's pretty much it. Um, some major projects I'll show you guys what it all looks like when it's done. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys later.